Welcome to module one of the Echo Masters Foundation course. This is where your hands-on journey begins. In this first lesson, we are going to master the single most important tool in echocardiography, the probe. By the end of this lesson, you will know exactly which probe to grab, how to hold it like a pro, and the core movements you will use to get every single view. You might see different ultrasound probes attached to the ultrasound machines. There is the phased array probe, and there is the linear probe, which is a probe with higher frequency and mainly used for scanning superficial structures, mainly blood vessels. And there is a curvilinear probe, which is meant to scan deeper fields and has wider footprint. It's mainly used for abdominal scans. While they are all useful for cardiac echocardiography, there is only one hero, which is the phased array probe. It has a smaller footprint and is designed specifically to get into the intercostal spaces and scan the heart. For this entire course, whenever we talk about the probe, this is the one we mean. This is the right tool that we use for echocardiography. When you select a probe, always double check that the selected probe is the one appears on the screen. Every probe has a label on it, like X or S or P51 or whatever. So just double check that this label is the same that appears activated on your screen before starting scanning. Now look closely at your probe. You will see a small dot or a marker or a ridge. This is the orientation marker. This marker corresponds directly to the marker on your ultrasound screen. This is the single most important concept in all of ultrasound. If you get this wrong, everything will be backwards. The dot on the probe or the marker equals to the dot on the screen. How you hold the probe determines your level of control. You must use a pencil grip, holding it close to the head. This allows for tiny, precise movement. Don't hold it like a microphone or a club. Just as importantly, anchor your hand. Rest the heel of your hand or your fingers on the patient's chest wall. This creates stability and stops you from slipping. All echocardiography is just a combination of major five core movements that you should master because mastering them is the key to getting any view you want. Let us introduce them one by one. They are sliding, tilting, rocking, rotating, and sweeping. Sliding, which is how you move from one rib space to another. This is the only movement that entails entire movement of the probe and the footprint from a place to another. Then tilting, which like aiming the ultrasound beam up and down perpendicular to the footprint. Then we have rocking, which kind of fanning side to side parallel to the footprint. Then we have rotating, which is a powerful move to change the entire plane completely from caudal to cross-sectional, for example. Combining all together will be a form of a longer movement called sweeping, but let us get to see them in action one by one. Let's start with the first and the simplest movement, sliding. This is the act of moving the probe across the skin from a point to another. We usually start scanning with this and we use this to move between rib spaces or to find a better acoustic window. Watch how the view changes from the place to another 
with just the sliding. We usually start the scans with this movement to ensure that this is the best window we get. For example, moving from the third to fourth or to fifth intercostal space to make sure that this is the best blacks view that we get. Next up is tilting. Imagine holding a flashlight. Your hand stays still, but you aim the beam up and down. That's exactly what tilting is. It's a very tiny, fine movement. The probe's footprint stays in the exact same spot on the skin, but we angle the beam to scan through the heart. This is a very crucial skill to master. A classic application of that is from the apical four chamber view, where just a tiny tilt like 10 or 15 degrees by lowering the tail of the probe down, aiming anteriorly with the footprint, you open the aortic valve and the LVT. So that's moving from apical four chamber view to apical five chamber view, opening the LVT and clearly seeing the aortic valve was just a tiny movement you master called tilting. Our third movement is rocking. If tilting is aiming up and down, rocking is aiming side to side. Again, the probe's footprint stays in one place on the skin. But now we gently rock the probe along its long axis to steer the beam left or right, medial or lateral. This is critical skill for fine tuning. For the apical four chamber view, we use this subtle rocking to optimize the view by aligning the interventricular septum vertically and centralizing the LV apex. Watch how this small movement makes a huge difference. And now for the fourth primary movement, rotating. This is turning the probe on its central axis, just like turning a key in a lock. The probe's footprint stays in the same intercostal space. This isn't a fine tuning move. This is our powerful move. It is the action that completely changes our perspective, changing the longitudinal axis to a cross-sectional axis, for example. Watch how we rotate the probe 90 degrees clockwise from the parasternal long axis view to get the short axis view. Finally, we have the fifth core action, sweeping. A sweep isn't just one movement. It's a purposeful combination of movements, which could be continuous tilting like this one, or a combination of two core movements like rocking then rotating. We use this to scan completely through a structure from one end to the other end. It is our primary tool for screening. Think of it like a searchlight examining an entire area, not just a single spot. This ensures we don't miss any pathology that is hidden like an eccentric regurgitant jet or an off-axis pathology as well. Here is a classic example where we search and look at the mitral valve from the very far end anterolaterally to the very far end postromedially. You can see that we start where the valve is not visible and we end where the valve is not visible at, at, as well. That means that we scan the valve from the very anterolateral aspect, the very far end to the very far end. If we combine that, for example, with color, we are pretty sure that we don't miss any eccentric jet. Echo is mastering how to combine your core movements fluidly. Small intentional movements based on a plan always outperform large random corrections. For example, if you have an apical foreshortened view, you could plan to slide to get that proper apical four chamber view, then combine that after that with tilting to get your apical five chamber view, opening the LVT and the water. Another example, if you are in parasternal long axis view, planning to get your short axis view, 
Then you start with rocking to get the aortic valve in the center of the sector first. Then combine that with rotating to get proper short axis parasternal view. Excellent work. Let us recap the essentials from this foundational lesson. First, always grab the right tool, the phased array probe. Second, know your orientation. The marker on the probe equals the dot on the screen. Third, hold it like a probe. Use a stable pencil grip and anchor your hand. Fourth, master the four primary core movements that build every view, sliding, tilting, rocking, and rotating. And finally, combine these movements to perform an intentional sweep, allowing you to screen entire structures from end to end. Practice these actions, even just holding the probe in the air, to start building that crucial muscle memory. You've built a fantastic foundation. Wonderful. You've mastered the hardware. In our next lesson, we will master the software. We are diving into nobology and image optimization to learn how to turn a fuzzy picture into a crystal clear diagnostic image. I will see you there.